Hello 3D printers. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about pore relay. Pore relay is a porous filament. So I printed two models. I have a scale. One of them, they're using the exact same G code. So this is one model right here, soaking in water. And this is the one that just came off the printer. You can kind of see here. Let's see if this focuses in. Face got a little bit messed up because of the detail. And then a lot of that actually had to do with my sizing settings and my nozzle. I switched to a larger nozzle. <clears throat> so this is the model. You can see right here it's kind of, I don't know if it's going to focus, but there we go. The back. So the smooth parts on it, the parts that weren't highly detailed printed very, very nice. There's not really any imperfections in them. And I don't know if it's going to, the camera's going to pick it up, but right here it's just ever so slightly these, it's almost like creases in the, creases in the clothing and it printed it out fantastic clothing so and it printed it out fantastic so this is a pretty interesting material where when you soak it in water there's an element to this that dissolves away and then you're left with a porous structure and you can fill it with many different things you can fill it with salt water or you can fill it with even a ferro fluid and make it electrically electrically charged so that's what we have here soaking in here. So we're gonna weigh this out to see how much does this weigh before and after the soak. So turning the scale on here, let's see. Oh no, that's not gonna work very well. And we can see that we're right at eight grams. And we're gonna see how much of it dissolves away. Out of all the materials that I've ever printed with, this is probably one of the nicest as far as how it comes off the printer. The layers are very, very smooth. The one thing I did notice though is it popped and crackled a lot. So I'm guessing that it absorbs a lot of moisture out of the air. So that's one thing that you really want to pay attention to and how you store the product. You know, I live up here in Washington and so it's always human, so I'm always worried about it pulling moisture out of the air. So I run my filament through a vacuum chamber and try and hold it there before I print with it. But if you notice it's crackling, you just want to throw it in the oven at 200 degrees Fahrenheit for maybe an hour or two, and that should help dry it out. So this has been in here for maybe um, two or three hours, so not the full soak time by any means, but it's starting to get very soft and flexible, very, very pliable. You can really, I don't know if it's going to focus in right here, you'll be able to see that. But this bottom has a lot of give to it. This is not like a normal PLA printed part. So you can really tell it's starting to dissolve away. And I don't know if this is going to show up, but the water is starting to get a little bit murky. So let's see if I can get directly. You can kind of see how murky the water is getting. So these are what they look like next to each other. And the size of this one is starting to expand. It looks like it's expanding the most in the Z direction. So it's getting a little bit taller. And I'm guessing that when it dissolves, it expands out a little bit. There's something, something with it. Originally, I wanted to print these out and use these as sponges because I thought, wouldn't that be cool to use a, a Buddha sponge? But the finish on this one, I don't know if the camera is picking this up, but it has a really cool sheen to it. It's refracting light in just a, this, like a shiny way almost, like a polished part. And let's go ahead and weigh this one. I'm kind of see where we're at and see how, um, all right. So we're at 10 kilograms, oh, nine grams, excuse me for this one. And I'm guessing that's because it's filled with water. If we soak it and then let it sit, we might lose a little bit of weight. 
And it also could be from the scale not being as accurate either. So anyway, back in here. And we'll take a peek at it when it's finished. So I've replaced the water with some warm water, soaked it, swapped it again, rotated it. And we can actually see the physical dimensions of the object vary in size. It's definitely gotten a lot taller in the Z direction. So here's kind of a good example here. Let me readjust the camera. So we can really see how much this material expands. And we can really start to see how, when I squeeze it, it's really starting to work just like a sponge. I don't know if this, hopefully this will work. I mean, it's, I can squeeze this, and there we go. It is starting to fall apart here on the layers. Let's see. It's a little bright out. So it is starting to fall apart on the layers. I don't know how well that's going to pick up, but it is starting to delaminate. But that could have been a print setting of mine. So it's just the strangest material I've ever printed with. But it sure enough is works just like they say it does. So anyway, all in all, I mean... I think this is a filament, unless you have a lot of money to spend, I think it's a filament. It turns out it's 250 grams is $40 on Matter Hackers, and you can buy it from them or directly from the maker himself. But I would say as a whole, unless you have a really specific application, that 8 gram print is going to work out to be very expensive for a sponge. And it doesn't look like the durability is quite there. It is a experimental filament too, so it's not something that claims to have all the kinks worked out of it. All in all, I'd say it's pretty cool, but practical application, I'm still kind of lacking on trying to figure it out. I might try and soak it in something like salt water and see how much power I can push through it and kind of see what the properties are like that, but all in all, you can really see, oh, this might be delaminating also because I didn't let it soak long enough. I'm, it's these back parts the walls are still a little stiff and I'm kind of wrenching on it a little hard but it definitely expands as well so it's kind of pretty interesting so as a whole I don't know if I could recommend this filament it's really expensive and it's very still experimental so unless you have a very specific application for it I'm not really sure what you would do with it it wouldn't be something that you could just print like a light socket out of or something like that. So leave any questions and comments below. Don't forget to hit like and please subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you again.